everybody. We thought today we're going to share a bit of our In The Trenches Airbnb experience we got in December. And hopefully if you're a new aspiring person that wants to do Airbnb, while it's still fresh in our minds, we're going to be sharing with you all our good and um, interesting, interesting experiences yeah. that we had over December. Because people are weird. Airbnb being our first properties. I'm Rieta from M5 Property Addicts and this is... Bevan from M5 Property Addicts. So guys, I think, um, where, where, where will we start? Let's start with what, the good, the bad, or the ugly? The good, start with the good. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the good. good luck, we, eh? we made good money, okay? Yes, there's money in it. Um, so that, I think, is for me, was the, the good. And I think we learned a lot, and we um, managed to make some money out of our property. So that was super, super cool for me. And Airbnb platform is great. They supported me whenever we had questions and issues. So I think, and it, it's nice, it's seamless, it's easy to load your, your properties. There's a few tweaks that we can recommend on, on how to do it. But um, yeah, I think for me, those were the two things that, that was really, that really stood out. What do you think, Bevan? What was your positives? Uh, yeah, I agree with that, those elements as well, especially the, the backup service from Airbnb was awesome. So when we had issues with, guests we had somewhere to contact they helped sort it out quickly and efficiently and brilliant like their manners were amazing with us like so appreciative of how we responded how we acted about the whole complaint and so on so that was brilliant for me yeah. and i think a big bonus for me was the fact that the pro the properties that we put up were student accommodation buildings and they would have been empty during that period so instead of us wasting that opportunity to have someone in a bed we, we managed to fill the the spaces during the during the holiday times yeah so maybe that's that's actually also another good point so what what i had so my properties i had a property in cape town in belleville which is again it was a student accommodation place um, we're filling it now with students but these um this property was kind of in in the middle of of it's very central but not close to tourist touristy places so we didn't really get a lot of tourists, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, we were full one week, one whole week uh, in December in the earlier weeks. We were full from uh, some actual students and their parents coming through for a graduation. We were very close to Sunlam, so we had some young professionals that, that came through. They, they're planning to, um, they're coming, migrating from wherever, and they're coming to work, so they're looking for a permanent place. So we were full from those guys. They had a function in December. We have intern doctors staying with us because we're very close to a hospital. So guys, remember, intern doctors, um, when you write your, your headlines on your, on your listing, you, you know, mention every listing separately and mention like five minutes from Cole Bremer Hospital, three minutes from Sunlam, five minutes and, and have those different things and change it up all the time so you can catch all of these guys looking for for something close to those those sort of things so that worked really well for almost me, like clickbait trying to get yeah into... clickbaity clickbaity things yeah. yeah and you had a property what in durban close in durban, to what, what close to uk kz and westville campus so my property unfortunately a little bit more sort of isolated not like really in a residential area and not really too close to like any other features so what i was anchoring on is the fact that it's in durban and it was it's fairly close to the durban beachfront a quick shoot onto the freeway and down to the beaches like 20 minutes to get to the beaches and all the party goers that didn't book anything ended up there yeah <laughs> Exactly. So it was a lot of that last minute stuff. So <laughs> New Year's Eve wasn't a fun one for me, but uh, that's, that's the ugly part <laughs> we'll talk about. <laughs> Guys, New Year's Eve, be careful you accept. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so I think also for me, I was full between Christmas and New Year. So that is definitely, it's a peak period and we capitalized on other people that couldn't deliver. We had a good service. We offered ex something extra. So as in breakfast, Cereal is not that expensive and yes, people love it when you give them free breakfast. So that was awesome for us. Um, yeah, so I think that's sort of the positives. The eh? positives, yeah. No. And easy to set up. I think the easy to set up part is a big thing. Like 
It doesn't take a lot to put it together. To make a room look pretty is simple. So like, don't be afraid mm. of that. Like, people aren't as fussy as you expect them to be. When it's there, they don't know what you've gone through. Just throw it together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think sort of the, um, how we set up the actual booking. So I have an instant booking, so people can just book. If they're verified, they book and they're there, no problem. Um, but what I changed, so I started off saying you can book in, we're flexible. You can book in any time, you can leave at any time. That changed very so quickly. So now we're talking learnings, eh? Learnings, so there we go, learnings. So things we changed, okay? And what I would keep the same sort of over time. So the one thing is that I had a flexible in and out. Then people will book, I kid you not, one o'clock in the morning and they'll pitch at 7 a.m. and they'll be upset that you're not ready. I mean, <laughs> my other guests are not even out yet. So that I quickly changed. I'm like, no, 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 11 o'clock, you can't. After 11, sorry for you. You have to come in after 11. Um, so that's definitely something I changed quickly, especially if you're going to do one night bookings because, you know, in and out, in and out and lots of washing. The other good thing actually is that I had a washing machine on the premises. So we didn't have to take bedding away to get washed. We just got a lady to come in, do washing and ironing and set up and we're done. Um, so I think in terms of my bookings, that's definitely something I would change, um, that I've learned um, how to do better. And what else did I change? Yeah, that's about it. The rest of it was instant bookings and, and whatever. My pricing was too low in the beginning, so I lost money. Guys, if there's a special on Airbnb for a monthly stay, and you do a special for the first three people that book in, Airbnb adds up all these things. So you, so I had a 50% of your stay for a month. I had a 20% off if you, one of the first three bookings uh, people to book. This person stayed in Cape Town for 85 rands a night. Mm. It's ridiculous. I, I, I nearly had a heart attack, but what I can I do? I hope they gave you a good review. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't because I eventually asked her to leave. Um, yeah, that's maybe another. Okay, so for 85 <laughs> rand, you expect you get what you yeah. pay for. No, what, she what they okay. pay for. So, so, so let me talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about the guests. Okay, now first okay. your setup. What setup my, things would you my change? My changing, I think the learnings for me again was also around that instant book. Uh, it is a lot easier when you've got two days to plan for a guest. And, and especially for bigger parties, it's easier if you've, if you've got enough mm. time. So, so if you've got bigger listings, give yourself two days. It allows you to, to be ready for them. Or you have extra bedding. Or, yeah, yeah, all the extra bedding and so on. Rita was quite nice that she had someone there to do the washing and everything. I wasn't as lucky on my property. And, and I think it does, it helps having someone there, making sure they're running it, making sure they're the ones checking in the, in the guests because it really is a case of you having to rush across town to quickly check people in. And another thing that I changed was, oh now I'm blank on it, but Oh, you'll remember. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you can jump in at yeah, any point if you remember. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think that is sort of the thing. Then some, some guest stories. Um, <laughs> so this, this girl that I asked to leave, she, she was so rude to the other guests. I mean, you know, you, you, you know you're staying in a place uh, with other people and she was, she, you know, she would be very rude to them. She would leave her dishes there. She wouldn't wash anything. Uh, she would play her music like loudly and it's a quiet house. She would play it like super loudly every day, day and night. And I don't know, for some people it was good, for other people not so much. But she walked around like naked in the house. <laughs> so eventually we said to her, no, we think you must go. I'll refund you your money, but please just go for whatever time you have left. So, so that was, a, was, a, was an interesting one there. And the other thing I think, Bevan, from what we can say from, from guests, is that people don't read. Not at all. It's, oh, you can click, list things. confirm, I'm rocking up. That's all they do. <laughs> they don't read that, guys, you're sharing a bathroom, okay? So don't give me a bad review. If you had to share a bathroom, I told you you're sharing a bathroom. You signed up for it. But they don't read, they don't check the amenities, they don't check any of these things. I mean, on your side, your parking thing, talk to about that yeah, thing. So mine, that was was a bit, mine was a bit worse because my, my property is 
purely a student accommodation property. It's got multiple rooms, it's set up completely for students. And with students, you don't need parking. So the, the property wasn't built with parkings. It's only got street parking, but they, it isn't necessary for students. And I made sure in all the descriptions on the prop, property, on the listing, that it said no off street parking. There is free street parking if you have to. And I uh, put it in the details, put it in the write-up, explain that it's a student accommodation building, and people still rock up and they go like, okay, where do I park? And I just go like... <laughs> so like after the second one that it happened, I was like, okay, fine, this is, like people don't read. So as soon as they booked, I sent them a message straight away. And I said, hey, listen, just making sure and reminding you that there's no off-street parking, is that okay? And that, that sort of... And they still of, didn't yeah. read. <laughs> Yeah. Because some of them wouldn't even respond. Eh? Some of them would respond and you go through the process and then, but like, I mean, one of you the last straw was, was that when he was, when I was finally to check if he was still coming, I realized he was driving down from Joburg, which immediately made me worry because now there's no parking. So I confirmed on the uh, Airbnb platform that I had sent him that message, but he hadn't responded. So I phoned the caretaker and I said, listen, this guy's going to come. I've told him on the message that there's no parking. He's going to be upset about it, but just remind him that I did tell him. And he literally lost his mind. He reported us on Airbnb and like basically to try and get out of his booking for free, he, he was trying to like downplay the property and give the property a bad reputation. So there's these people who they make the mistake and they blame you. And those are the ones that you've got to be wary about. And again, like Airbnb was good about that. They phoned me, said, listen, this is this case that's been opened. And I just said, listen, that's the story. Look at what I've communicated with them. And I think that's important. Communicate on the platform. So if they send you a WhatsApp, respond to them with a WhatsApp and then copy and paste that onto Airbnb. Yeah, communication so, yeah. on the platform. So, so, so at least they can you. see that yeah. you've constantly explained what to do. Yeah, that's very important. Very serious about it. Oh yeah. It hits them hard. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. <laughs> I, I tried to support Ben, but I would call him like every now and again, like Ben, are you still surviving? Because I, I feel your pain. <laughs> so we, we kind of we kind of complained uh, to each other throughout the, the whole process. Um, again, I was lucky. I, I had a, another lady helping me as well, Farzana. Um, so I was actually shame. Oh, I, was, I feel actually terrible because the first week of Airbnb, I went camping and I didn't even have reception, and she handled all of it. Shame. She was so awesome. So co-host guys, make sure if you're not going to be available, have a co-host that can see all the messages. They can help you. They can answer for you. So I think that helped me a lot. You didn't have yeah, a co-host. I, eh? no, I mean, I didn't really need one, but I think. In hindsight, it definitely helps having that backup. Yeah, whenever you can't answer immediately, then at least there's, there's somebody that can help. And she has two kids with car licenses, so we were sending them around all the time. Because <laughs> I literally had, what, eight listings uh, for eight rooms. Yeah, and then some other interesting guest stories. So I had a, I had a guy, he booked for one night only. I made the mistake of not checking where he actually lives. So he lives, it turns out afterwards I went and checked, he lives in Cape Town and you're booking Cape Town, how does that even work? But okay. Um, and then we found out the day after, because he's there just for one day, so the next day he's checked out and we're going to clean his room and it's like, what is going on here? Because it's a mess, right? Literally, the blinds are off the windows. It's that big a mess. The bed is in a different spot. It, it, was, it was hectic. And then we found out from the other guests that the night before, he rocked up there with two other girls. A single room, a single bed, people. So I don't want to know what happened there. Luckily, I don't have cameras. They were fighting for space. They were fighting for space. There you go. That's what happened there. Yeah. yeah. And then I had also um, some other girls as well there. And when we went to clean up the room, there were there were evidence of drugs and things there. So yeah, you need to be you need to really really check and check the reviews of the people. Don't let someone make a booking on behalf of someone else. Um, you know because that's just a recipe for disaster. So make sure you screen your guests. 
Who, okay, yeah. you have the best story though. <laughs> <laughs> and well, learning. So, and again, I mean, Airbnb covers you around these things. So it's quite, it's quite nice doing it through Airbnb because you get the backup. So I had, I had these guests from the start, they were trying to bypass Airbnb and I sort of insisted, listen, um, I can't share my details, Airbnb blocks that. So you need to make the booking, I've approved your booking. And once you've made the booking, then you get my contact details and we can let you come and view the property from there. So you stick to their parameters, it protects you quite nicely because they've got their host protect or host assist, which is like an insurance up to 10 million Rand. So if something goes missing from your property, you can claim. If something's damaged, you can claim. And, and that's where it was nice because I stuck, stuck to the, the platform that gave us that protection. Unfortunately, these guests, and I, and I kind of knew, they, they were booking for New Year's Eve. They were happy with the parking arrangement because they were going to Uber from the jaw. And they, <laughs> so it was just there for the night to sleep. They asked for permission to check out late. So again, I, I sort of said, okay, there's no one booked the next day. Fine, you, you can check out. There were six of them, potentially eight. So it was a bigger group. It, it was worth my while. Unfortunately, during that evening, I think four of them stayed behind and only two of the guests went away and they must have left the main door open and someone else had come in from the street and broken into one of the other bedrooms. So, so now I'm going through this process of trying to get the damages sorted out by Airbnb and, and obviously this guest lost something. But the frustrating thing is they immediately push the blame onto you as if you let this intruder in, whereas I was... Of course you did. Yeah, you course, left the door. Like, open. Yeah. It was you. I was there. <laughs> so, where, whereas I kind of went like, okay, this is obviously like a rubbish story that you're spinning. You lost your keys and that's why you kicked the door in. And then when you dig deeper, you realize, okay, his partners or his other, the guests that were with him, left the property door okay. open and that's how it happened. So you've got to dig a bit deeper. And then through that, then I sort of push the complaint And I didn't even know up. that you could actually claim, afterwards you can claim money from your guest, which yes. is interesting. I mean, if I knew I could do that in time, I would have done it for that idiot that messed up the room so badly. Yeah. Would have charged him a 200 rand cleaning fee. Exactly. Idiot. clients are not idiots. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I mean, so now this New Year's Eve um, learning for me is if, because we're obviously going to do this again next mm. December holiday, and what Easter? Easter well, it depends. No, because no, the students keep they their stuff they, in the yeah. in the room. So, okay. so when the property is vacant for December, I'll do Airbnb again. But on the evenings around New Year's Eve. I'm going to enforce a cleaning fee yes. because then that covers anything after it. So, so they, if they're going to party, at least you covered, you got some expense. Yeah, because you cover. even lost guests afterwards because they, they messed so much yeah. and it was stinking and whatever and we yeah. couldn't finish cleaning in time. So, mm. yeah, so lots of learnings. Are we still, but like you say, we, we're still up for it. Yeah, I definitely. think the money is still worth it. Um, to continue to continue doing that we covered more than the bonds that we have on the properties um, all our expenses and we, we made a little bit of extra yeah. money on there so will we do it again yes uh, yeah, exactly all right guys hope you enjoyed it and um, next time around we'll be sitting here telling you about students and how much we love them yes <laughs> bye guys <laughs>